Hello everyone and welcome to another day of cooking with me. Today I'm gonna show you some of the most popular cuts in the kitchen. So let's get started. As a first thing I'm gonna show you how to make some crispy celery. Now this crispy celery you can use it for salads or you can use it for fish or you can use it for whatever preparation. It needs to have that little bit of fresh crunchy taste on top. You know what I mean. As first thing I'm gonna cut it in about 10 to 15 centimeters long and then use my peeler press get rid of the first one which has the most fiber and then have some little stripes place them one on top of the other I know it's a little bit of hard work at first but I promise you in the end it's gonna be a cool very very cool result now when we have it at this stage I'm gonna take it with a knife move it sideways and make a quick julienne out of it try to cut it as small as you can And once it's cut, it, move it to a bowl of icy water and give it a mix around. Now let it sit in there for about three to five minutes. And after that, we should have some nice and crispy celery. I'm gonna show you the perfect position on how to hold your hand while cutting. First of all, you always need to have a firm grip on your knife. That's very important. If you have a loose knife, there is a high chance that you're gonna cut yourself. Second stage, your left hand or your right hand in case you're a lefty needs to go as we call it like bear claw it's pretty much like this the position needs to have the middle finger leading and then all the other fingers behind so this is the exact position that you should have in the kitchen with the tip of your middle finger bend it a little bit towards back and whenever you are cutting your blade needs to be touching this part of your knuckle and this is the movement that you do so i don't know if you can see it here but all my fingers are always behind the knife. So by using this technique, there is no risk that you're gonna cut yourself. Now for the second cut, I'm gonna show you my own way of cutting a cucumber. Most probably know the cucumber has a very watery part in the middle. So whenever I'm cutting a cucumber for salad or for whatever other preparation, I like to take the middle part out. And the reason is that once you salt it, it starts releasing water. And because that middle part is very watery, you're gonna have water all over your salad or all over your preparation. And you don't want that. So for the cucumber, I usually cut it first in half and then in half again. And once you have it at this point, just bend your blade sideways and go clean cut down. And this one here is the watery part. Now you can eat it if you want as it is like this, or you can have it in water just to make an infused water with cucumber. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of them. I will do a quick julienne. Julienne is also known as the matchstick cut. As you can imagine, it's pretty much small matchstick size cuts. Pretty much this is our cucumber julienne. The cut is very simple, very clean. All of them are the same size. And trust me, if you have it like this and you put it inside a salad, it's gonna be just perfect. Another trick that I would like to share with you is how to cut open a garlic and how to make garlic paste in the fastest way possible. As a first thing, I'm gonna take three garlic cloves and then with the side of my blade, just press it and push. And same with the other two. Now this is the quickest way to peel your garlic, in my opinion. And once you have it at this point, you can pretty much just chop it down, use it for your sauce, use it for garlic toast, use it for whatever you want. But in this case, I'm gonna show you even how to make a garlic paste. So as the first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and chop it a little bit. And almost forgot, when you cut it like this, the best way to do it is to have a firm grip with your dominant hand and then the other hand just place it on the blade, on the edge of the blade and push down, have some pressure. This is the most stable and safe way to chop garlic and make it super fine. So what I'm doing right now is pretty much I'm pressing down and my left hand is holding the tip so it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't move very much. And this way of cutting is pretty much good when you're cutting garlic or even when you want to have finely chopped uh, parsley for your pasta, why not? Now that my garlic is pretty much at this point, I'm gonna add some salt on it. And then with the side of my knife, just gonna press it down and move it around. Put it together and do it again. You will see at first it's gonna be a bit hard, but after a little bit, you're slowly gonna have a paste. 
But be careful because this preparation is gonna mess up your chopping board. That's gonna smell like that for about two weeks. Now for this grinding technique, what I'm usually doing, I press down with my pointing finger on the blade of the knife. And with my non-dominant hand, I also press down and move it around, almost like waving it. And when it's pretty much at this point, take it and move it to a small glass bowl or a small container. Add some olive oil and give it a good mix. And just like this, we have garlic oil. And this one here, you can keep it in your fridge for about, I would say a week or so before going bad. And you can use it pretty much for everything from sauce to pasta, to salads, to garlic bruschetta pretty much all the preparations that come to your mind. Now, another preparation that I like doing is the brunoise. Brunoise is a French term for uh, small cubes, which is pretty much used for making sauces, such as uh, ragu sauce. For this preparation, the first step is to peel your carrots. And once you have peeled it, it's time to slice it longwise first. Then move it sideways and cut in a small julienne. And after which, take a bit at a time, put them all together and cut them in small cubes. And just like this, you have your brunaz of carrots. Now do the same with some celery and with some onions and you have the perfect base for your ragu. Now for the next cut, I'm gonna show you how to make a chiffonade. The chiffonade is the perfect cut if you want to drizzle some fresh herbs on top of your preparation, on top of your pasta, your sauce, or even inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make it. First of all, take the leaves, in this case I'm using mint, and separate them one by one. Now when you have them at this point, what I usually like to do is to take the leaves and spread them out one on top of each other. You don't have to be very perfect. Now, once you have it at this point, just press it down and do a nice julienne out of it. Try to make it as small as possible. And once your leaves are cut, just mix them a little bit around. And this over here is our chiffonade. Perfect to sprinkle on top of whatever preparation you're doing. Now for the next cut, I'm gonna show you the cut, so-called mirepoix. So for this cut, I'm gonna take two carrots. You can either peel them or leave them whole. In this case, I'm gonna leave them whole. And pretty much what you need to do, yeah, you guessed it, big chunks. Nothing easier than this. Now this cut here is perfect if you want to make a soup or if you want to make a brown sauce, or you want to roast them in the oven, or even if you want to roast them in the oven. So just have them big chunks, they keep the flavor, they stay juicy, just throw them in the oven and they're gonna be perfect. And for the next one, I'm gonna show you how to make the tomato concasse. For this cut, I'll take the whole tomato and make a cross at the bottom of it, and then pop it in hot water for about 30 seconds to one minute, and just mix it around. And after about a minute or so of cooking, or blanching, I'm just gonna drain it and straight away in cold ice water and move it around a little bit. Now the reason why I'm blanching it and then putting it straight in the water is because by blanching it, you loosen up the skin. And by cooling it down in the water, you stop the cooking process. So you're gonna still have a raw, a relatively raw tomato, but the peel is gonna be very easy to clean. Just check this out. Grab one end. And now that we have it peeled, I'm gonna cut it first in half and half again, and then take the inside out. So the reason why I'm taking the inside part out is because the one that is full of seeds and water, and I don't want to have that in my preparation, you know, for bruschetta or for sauce, for whatever kind of thing. I don't want that water inside. You can still use it, it's very good for sauces, but not for this particular recipe. And when it's at this point to make the concasse, just take the tomato, cut it longwise, then sideways, and cut in cubes. And this is how you make tomato concasse. And as the last cut, I'm gonna show you my personal favorite way of cutting an onion, which is pretty much sliced. So as a first thing, just cut the head and then peel it down. Now, what I usually like to do when I peel an onion is to remove the first layer, which is usually the most, the one that has more fiber in it. So it's the hardest one to chew. So as you can see, I didn't remove the end part of it. And the reason is because that helps to keep the onion together when you slice it. So it's a lot easier. So once you have it at this point, I'm gonna cut it in half. And once I have it cut in half, I'm gonna make small cuts here. And 
one or two cuts sideways and then go ahead and chop it. As you can see, the end part is holding everything together. So when you get at this point, you just move it sideways and you carry on cutting. And then the other half instead is the sliced onion. So for this one, pretty much what you need to do is just go straight down and make a quick julienne out of it. And in the end, if you have the feeling of crying or very itchy eyes because of the onion, as I have them right now, the secret is to breathe through your mouth. If you breathe through your mouth, you're should, you should not have any problem, so... No? Already better. Oh yeah, and almost forgot, before we finish, there's our crispy celery. Oh, look at that. Just drain it a little bit from the water. You see how it stands? It's just so beautiful. And this, my friends, is how I do most of the cuts that I use for cooking. I hope it was a really helpful video and I see you at the next one.